Mew. Hello, everybody. This is Red Rhino Kitty. And Master Pravis. And today, we are going to talk about the generational trauma of going through and continuing to go through the blizzard of 78. We had snow, which meant people had to ask us about the blizzard of 78. Do you remember the blizzard of 78? I sure do remember the blizzard of 78 and I remember it every single day of my life that I go outside and there's a single flake of snow and somebody um, walks past me on the street. If there is a single flake falling in the greater Boston area and you're outside, they're like, were you around for the blizzard of 78? And even- It's practically, it, it's- it's practically a joke, except it's not a joke. It's not a joke! Everybody is terrified! They're like, were you here for the blizzard of 78? And, like... It was pretty bad. I actually was here for the blizzard of 78. You I, actually missed the blizzard of 78. I was not technically here, but I still have the generational trauma of it because people are caught... Like, when I was a little kid, they were constantly reminding me how terrible it was. I have heard every single Bostonian's story. Including mine. Of how terrible it was. But he actually has a really good one. I do. Um, I've heard everyone's story. I have heard everybody's story. All of my teachers in every, like, in grade school, in high school, in every single extracurricular activity. Everybody told me their story of what happened during the blizzard of 78. Then if there's even, like, if the weatherman says, oh, we're getting a single flake, or oh, if it turns cloudy during a cold month, people are like, oh my God, are you prepared? Are you okay? Like we go outside and people are like, Do you, are it's, you prepared? It's, it's almost expected, but like, I don't even remember noticing it as much when we lived here until we moved away for 10 years. We came back and that weekend we were going to get snow and like some random people that were just out were like, hey, were you kids around for the Blizzard of 78? And every time someone calls Master Pray this a kid, I'm never prepared for it. And I'm like, I, I wasn't, but then I was like ready for their story. I like internally <laughs> gripped and <laughs> just sat there and they were like, bad storm, bad <laughs> storm. And Master Pravis was like, I was here for it. And he started going into his story. You have to have, if you were there for the blizzard of 78, you have a story. I started telling my mother's story when they were done. Like everyone has a story. Mine is very good because my mother had a terrible story. As soon as it starts to snow, it's, do you have salt? Oh, God. And do you remember the blizzard of 78? And like, if you don't have salt, that person is like, oh my God. And if you're near their home, they're like, well, you can get salt over here. And they like run into their house and like get you a meatloaf or a bottled water. I, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody came out with a cup of salt for you. Put it in your pocket in case you get stuck here, in the car. I, I bagged up some salt for you so you'll be okay. Make sure you stock up on water. Don't forget on your way home. They just, it's like, it's panicked within us. It is deep in our hearts. And I wasn't here. And, and like, back in Colorado, they sold small salt in small containers of five pounds, 25 pounds. In Massachusetts, every corner convenience store has a 50 pound bag oh my of God, salt. Yes. You can't get less than 50 pounds of salt unless you buy like special safety light, pet friendly, and then you can get a small amount of it. But Master like- Master Previs is a bad bag. We came home and needed salt and they're like, um, he's like, do you have anything less than 50 pounds? And Stupid they're, question. They're like, no, they we, don't have anything less than 50 pounds. We could maybe make you a custom 25 pounds, sir. And he's like, just take the 50. Well, you're going to need it. I, do you remember the Blizzard of 78? You're going to have some. I do remember. I do. I remember. I remember everyone's stories. They're ingrained in my heart. Well, you, my story of the Blizzard of 78, because we're talking about the Blizzard of 78. It's okay. You're warm and dry right now. 
And there's no snow when outside. I was, when I was a little kid, the blizzard of 78 was great. There was like no school for a week or more. My mother was a teacher, so she was home with us because she didn't have to go to work. My father, though, he was considered essential personnel. They actually sent a National Guard APC, one of those like tracked tank things without a gun on it. And he climbed on the outside of that, along with everybody else who was an essential personnel, and they're like driving around on a tank to get him to the hospital. You forgot to tell them that your father was blind. <laughs> yes, my father was legally blind. Well, he was pretty blind. He used to have to walk around with a magnifier on. Yeah, he had a special cane so he could walk. Not and he just couldn't kind read without blind. like huge thick jeweler glasses and then he's Fairly like blind. one letter at a time, three inches from his face. Decently blind. <laughs> Could not drive blind. Right. But yeah, our front door, like the front steps to our house actually had steps up to get to the front door. So you're already off the ground, I don't know, five feet for the front door, do you think? Five feet off the ground? Oh my god, yeah. And the snow still came up over the door, so that's like 15 feet of snow. And like, the door opened in, otherwise you wouldn't have been able to open and the door. And they didn't tell you that the snow was coming. Uh, of course, I was a little kid. I just wait. I was hoping for a snow day. I might have prayed too hard. This was your fault. All my fault. Naughty. But it was great. We drug a tunnel down the steps because, you know, snow was over the door. We drug a tunnel down the walkway to the car. And we drug a tunnel around the car. But my mother wouldn't let us keep it a tunnel because she was afraid it would cave in on us. So she poked the roof and collapsed the whole thing. And then we had to dig it out again. That was a lot of snow. That is a lot of work too. It's a lot of work. I was like, what? Seven? That's... My little brother was like, four? It's a long time ago. But yeah, so he got stuck at the hospital right. for weeks. He had to stay with the nuns because it was a Catholic hospital. Mm -hmm. And um, mom was home alone. And I don't remember how we did food. I'm assuming the neighbors brought over food. There were a lot of old neighbors in my neighborhood. So everybody had food. Having to stay with the nuns. I caught in the front hall. So what was your mother's story for the blizzard of 78? It was terribly boring, but, you know, she sta she'd stayed at home. Like, in general, she was a stay-at-home mom, and she did foster care, so she had a bunch of children in the house, and they were all very young, and the power went out, and they couldn't get the door open at first, and when they finally got, and I mean, you know, my mother had like stairs that went up to a landing mm -hmm. and then that landing went up again. Cause like the driveway was on ground level and then you had to go up like four, four feet steps. to the yard. Yeah. And there was a walkway to the stairs and, and then, then you had to go up, up the stairs. Yeah. And so like from the landing up the steps, it kind of filled and then they had to dig all of that out from the stairs to the landing in order to get down to get help. But also the stairs down, like all of the stairs were, I mean, you're talking about like five feet of snow for the first set of stairs and then the landing totally five feet of snow down there and then five feet of snow for that second set of stairs. So that was just totally screwed. That was screwed. <laughs> And they had no power and had all those children running around the house and they only people they Free labor. Free labor, but the but they were really young kids, yeah. like five and under. And I know your mother made your brother work at four, but well, he didn't really do much work. They were foster, foster kids, shovel. so they couldn't be forced to manual labor like that. So the only one in the house that was able to do manual labor was my older brother, is what I'm told. Because I didn't, I wasn't really there, and so he alone. While my my dad was at work, he alone. He was at work during the blizzard. I guess he was out. He was like out driving. Like he hadn't made it home yet. That's crazy. Yeah. So anyway, my brother alone had to work on clearing the, um, I don't know, he had to work on clearing the stairs. Eventually my dad got back and continued to help him. Um, but 
for the majority of it, they could, like, no crews were coming in to help them with the power. So they just wound up being without power for, like, well over a week. How did you guys stay warm? I wasn't there. They were cold in that house. They did say that the neighbors went, like, door to door trying to pass food and water to each other, but like in general, they were trying to clear the stairs. I remember that when we lost power, because you didn't lose power the whole time, but they had a fireplace. Oh yeah, you guys had a fireplace. We didn't have a fireplace and they had no power. And um, you know, they had a lot of neighbors close together, but no one could really get up and down the- um, The road. The road. And my dad was lucky because he managed to get back before everything got too intense, but he was out kind of in the beginning. And I mean, he's really lucky that he didn't die out there because yeah. a lot of people died out there, which is why there's so much generational trauma. Yeah, I feel like people still have fireplaces, you know, so we need a fireplace for in case the power goes out during a blizzard. Do you remember the blizzard of 78? It's crazy because I, I remember there were times when we lost we lost power and there were terrible blizzards, but it's just the blizzard of 78 that's the important one. Yep. <sighs> Trauma. Do you feel better? Oh, yeah. I told you my mother's story was, was boring. No one came and took my dad away to a nunnery. <laughs> they just, like... Tried to shovel and couldn't eat. Oh yeah, mom always talks about how hard it was because dad had to go to work and she was all alone with us kids. Stuck with you. <laughs> I was a hit. You, you were like, I can't, I love you, but as a child I can't imagine watching you. You just have to keep me busy. I can't imagine. I can't imagine. I love you. I love you too, Katie. Even if you don't remember the Blizzard of 78. I remember everyone's stories. I remember how boring it must have been to be my mother in the cold with no food. But, you know, being taken to the nunnery sounded, um... Well, taken to the hospital, but then sleeping in the uh, convent that was attached. That's the best one I've heard so far. Well, thanks for listening. Thanks everybody, and if you have any Blizzard of 78 stories, leave them in the comments. Mew! Bye! Bye everybody! Welcome to my party, we're just getting started, a life is a dream or